How's it going everybody? Welcome back to the Matt VidPro AI YouTube channel. I hope you're all having a fantastic day. We are at an inflection point in AI technology where it has gotten very good at creating projects and code. It can build functional operational software that is fully tweakable and customizable. This right here is my latest GitHub project with the power of the boundary dissolving AI technologies like Google's new anti-gravity coding software. This is something I can bring to your doorstep, explain, and hopefully leave you guys with the knowledge you need to do something like this yourselves. So yeah, it's an autonomous AI research agent that performs web searches. That alone isn't going to impress anybody. I get it. If you need to search the web, especially conduct research with AI, there are a plethora of tools that already exist for free that you can use. And they are very good. Not going to lie to you guys. This one's also very good. The thing is, those tools are not as custom and you're not going to learn what makes them tick. The point of today's video isn't really about being the better AI research agent. It's more about getting hands-on with the AI technology. You'll become inspired to build your own AI based tools. You don't have to start a company. You don't have to be trying to make a profit. It can even just be for yourself, whatever you're into this project. And I hope this video will leave you guys inspired. Open your eyes a little bit to what is possible as someone who doesn't know how to code, someone who isn't super into the deep weeds of AI can actually create something new and cutting edge. But yeah, here's where we're starting off. This is the GitHub page. It's my repo. I built this in collaboration with GPT 5.2 and Gemini anti-gravity agent. This thing's pretty basic. It uses a couple of APIs. First of all, the bright data API, which is where you're going to get those web searches and scrapes from. They've graciously sponsored today's video, helping support the channel. So huge thanks to Bright Data in that regard. All right. So how do we actually install the research agent? GitHub can kind of be a scary place if you're new to code and open source projects. All these different files, you can see there are even prerequisites and there is an installation guide. Some of you might be developers and have done this a billion times. Some of you might also be completely new. Let's start out by touching on the features. It uses Gemini 3 flash preview to reason through and sift through all of the information and sources to come to a conclusion and generate your answer. It's fast, really damn good and efficient, meaning it's very cheap in the API. We've got Lemon Agent GUI. It's a modern, clean web interface, two different modes, a basic fast mode that just does classic SERP search plus synthesis. This is what you're getting when you're doing like a Google search and it has the AI answer. Good for quick facts and then deep discovery, advanced multi-step research using deep search agents. This includes scrapers and social search. You can get information from Reddit, which honestly a lot of times has some pretty good and helpful stuff. Even x.com I've seen as well, although not as frequently. It automatically saves any research for later review. Every claim is backed by a verifiable source link. That is a quick, easy link takes you right to the site. I'm going to show you guys how to set up a Gemini API key. It's very easy as well as get a bright data key, bright data. The sponsor of this video is really the oomph behind grabbing and actually scraping all of these sources from the web getting that information and presenting it in the JSON format. I'll teach you guys how to set up an API key with them as well. It is honestly maybe even just as easy. Now, for those not as familiar, we're going to need a couple of prerequisites. First of all, need a Python 3.10 or higher, no JS and NPM for the GUI. Python is a super easy download. I'll link it below. You'll install it. Nothing obvious is going to happen, but it'll make sure things work fine later. Also node.js, same exact deal. You download an installer, you run it, nothing obvious happens. Now for NPM, it's going to be a little bit different. This page takes you through the instructions on installing NPM. There will be a convenient time to run this command to just install NPM pretty soon. One thing I highly recommend is Google anti-gravity. Think of this as the portal, the camera that allows you to see into the world of the code and what a software project is based of completely free. You do have to log in with your Google account, but you'll get access to the Gemini three models as well to build or modify 
any project or code. Okay, back to the GitHub page. Our first step on the installation instructions is to clone the repository. This right here is a command to do it with code. You can also just go up here to the green code button and download a zip. This has the entire repository zipped inside it. Double click to open it and then drag it to your desktop or wherever you want to store it. So when you open that folder up, this is what it's going to look like. For now, you can ignore most of the items in here. There's still a little bit more that we need to do before the project is ready to be run and opened up. And that's when Google's anti-gravity software is going to become relevant, especially if you want to modify or change this. Inside of this folder right here, you're going to want to go to any blank spot that's not going to highlight a file or a folder and right click. From there, find the open in terminal option. And what this will do is open up a new terminal within that folder. As you can see, the terminal is directed at that particular folder. Let's go back to our GitHub, clone the repository. We already did that by downloading it directly inside of GitHub. Now we're ready to set up the Python backend. We'll go ahead and copy that code, go into our Windows PowerShell, paste it in with control and V, click enter to run it. It's going to then use Python to set up the Python environment. Now, before we move on to step three, if you remember what I said about NPM, this command right down here, copy that and put it right into our Windows PowerShell. Now we can move on to step three, copy this code right here, paste it into the terminal and run it. That's gonna set up the front end React stuff. Next, go to step four, copy the code yet again, paste it right in, hit enter. What this is going to do is create a duplicate of env.example named env. This file is important because it's where your API keys are going to go so the AI agent actually functions. For now we can exit out of the terminal and while it isn't necessary, I highly recommend you guys, if you haven't already, install Google Anti-Gravity. If not, open something like VS Code or a text editor of your choosing. In Google Anti-Gravity, I'm going to click Open Folder. Go ahead and select your project folder, and now you can see all of those same files, including .env, are directly in here. If we click on the env file, you can see it opens this up, and at the bottom, we see Google API Key. At the top, we'll see Bright Data API key. There's also some other stuff in here, some specific bright data things that can be adjusted. Also, potential but untested support for OpenAI keys and Olama. I didn't have trouble with anything else, so I think it probably works fine. I just haven't tested it out. Let's go ahead and start with grabbing the Bright Data API key. Linked down below is Bright Data. This is like the engine that powers all of the source gathering and information gathering from the web to provide to our LLM agent. You can get started for free, no credit card required, just like the Google API. You can see at the moment, I still have 29 days left in my trial. When you log into your Bright Data account, it'll take you to a screen that looks something like this, the home Regardless, on the left-hand side here, we're going to want to move down to API. We're going to want to go ahead and click on Create an API. As you can see, Bright Data offers quite a few different types of APIs. We've got the browser API, run and scale remote browsers with built-in unlocking for web navigation, interaction, and data extraction. This is best for gathering data off websites that have interactions. Clicking, hovering, navigating in between different pages. They have the web unlocker API. That's data extraction and collection from more difficult to scrape websites. This is the closest API they have that emulates a real user. And finally, the SERP API. This will grab you HTML or JSON from search engine results, main search, travel, hotels, maps, shopping, etc. If you remember, this is the more simple basic mode, right? Regardless, right now, this is the API we're going to make. The default name will be SERP API 1. As you can see, I have a duplicate name, so I got to go with 2. This name has to also be specified in our ENV file. It's already in there as SERP API 1 because I know a lot of people will probably make a new account. For format, you can either pick between standard or maximized. This is a beta feature. I'm kind of inclined to give it a try, to be honest with you. And data format, this is important. You're going to want to go ahead and pick light JSON. This is the format that the agent I built currently accepts, but of course it could be modified quite easily in Google anti-gravity to use raw HTML or screenshots instead. That would be kind of cool. Maybe even build a user interface where we can see the screenshots as it's searching. Regardless, then you click add API. 
and yay, you've successfully created your API. Now back on the left-hand side under Web Access API, this is where you'll be able to see your different APIs. Click on Direct API Access to see your API key. You can go ahead and copy it on the side back into Google Anti-Gravity or whatever text editor you're using. Bright Data API key, just paste it. All right, let's move our attention now down to the Google API key. Click the link down in the description below and navigate to the Google Google AI Studio, you might have to sign in, but once you do, in the bottom left-hand corner, there's a button that says Get API Key. You're going to want to go ahead and create a new API key. If you don't have a project already, you can click Create New Project, name it whatever you'd like, name your key something fancy, and you'll have created a key. To copy it, it is very simple. Right next to where it says Set Up Billing, you click Copy API Key pasted mine in. Don't worry, I'm going to be deleting this before this video even gets uploaded. That key is going to be gone. Back in Google AI Studio, you can see we're currently in the free tier and we can set up billing. Google is pretty good about giving you some free API credits, but eventually you will run out and then it's a pay as you go system and you have to set up billing, which you would obviously click on this link here. I'm pretty sure that mine is set up with Google Pay. Also down in the corner, they have a let it snow mode. Very festive as you're uh, setting up your API keys. <laughs> Once your project folder is completely set up, we can move on to actually running it and using our agent. Back on the GitHub instructions, you can see we're going to need two different terminals, one to run the back end and then one to run the front. I'm going to go ahead and copy this first one on a blank part inside of the folder, right click and then click open in terminal. This will open the terminal right in the correct folder for us. Now all I have to do is hold control control, press V, paste in the code, press enter, and you can see our server is running. Go back to your folder, right click again, open in terminal, grab that second piece of code, and then send. Go ahead and copy this address. This is the locally hosted website that we can now use any browser to access. And there, loads up like a charm. Obviously, some default lemon themed UI here. I know, it's pretty awesome. I had Gemini 3 Pro do the front end design here. It's very basic and simplistic. It's just asking for additions. Keep in mind, we've got to switch the basic fast mode or the deep discovery mode that could take up to three minutes or so. We've also got history. As you can see, I googled myself, but I have no way to actually view my past research, so that still has to be added in as a feature, but they do all at least save, and I'll show you how you can actually check them out. You can also delete them. For this basic fast one, let's try asking something like, when will the U.S. stop minting the penny? Are pennies going to become rare? How fast will that happen? I'm trying to ask here for a little bit more than a Google search, and you can see in probably under 30 seconds, it returns to us with the executive summary. The United States has officially terminated the production of the one cent coin, commonly known as the penny, ending a 233 year tradition. Damn, man, they they did Lincoln dirty. It also explains, you know, why the decision was actually made in the first place. I like how it directly gets in the next portion too. The penny will not disappear from the economy immediately. It's still legal tender. Standard pennies are unlikely to become rare in the pneumostatic sense for many years due to the sheer volume of existing stock. Yeah, that, that would make sense. There are quite a few pennies. But then we get into, you know, the comprehensive analysis, giving us the timeline of discontinuation. It even breaks down a minor discrepancy in the sources regarding an end date. Several reports confirm the final penny pressing occurred in November of this year. These three sources. Other institutional forecasts from earlier in the year estimated the phase out would conclude in early of next year, giving us even deeper insights about the logistical wind down. This is actually a pretty darn good research agent. Remember, this is just the, the basic fast mode. Economic and political rationales, scarcity and rarity factor. Obviously, pennies aren't going to become rare overnight. Also, the impact on commerce and the rounding transition. Key evidence and data laid out plain risks and limitations, even recommendations for consumers versus business and retailers. Here are our sources neatly lined up at the end. And then also, you can see the website has the 
ability to click on any of these. You can see Wikipedia is in here, USA Today, the direct USMint.gov. Not a bad little report for the basic fast option. You know, you gotta wonder, how many pennies are there anyways? Squeezing out fresh insights. Honestly, Gemini 3 really did a good job with the user interface and design. I like the little spinning lemon logo as it generates everything. And there we go. As of late 2025, the estimated number of pennies in circulation fluctuates between 114 billion, 300 billion pennies. Let's switch over to deep discovery. How reliable are Ford focuses? What are the best years and which years should I avoid? What kind of service do they come with all wheel drive? We'll send that one off and we'll see how much better the deep discovery is. There's so many interesting ways I feel like we could modify this. Maybe with deep discovery, instead of having Gemini 3 flash, Maybe we could switch to Gemini 3 Pro or even switch to a different kind of prompt. And we'll take a look at prompting very soon because this whole thing is customizable. Remember, it's all actually running locally on your machine right now. Or in the video, it's my machine, but you get the point. That one definitely took longer, maybe 45 seconds. As you can see, again, starts out with this executive summary. Polarized reliability profile, significant variations across its production generations, capable of achieving high mileage, mm, diligent maintenance, reputation is heavily bifurcated. Don't you guys just hate it when the AI agent you built is smarter than you? Ooh, severe transmission instability. Oh, give us a nice line to kind of break up the executive summary and the comprehensive analysis, financial burden of ownership, 569 average annual repair cost, gets into the transmission divide, 2012 to 2017. Okay, so it's these models released between these years. Catastrophic transmission failure. Oh, man. Uh, okay, and if you have the automatic version versus the manual version, obviously it's a different ballgame. Best years of reliability, 2006. 2010 to 2011, 2018. Owners who keep up on maintenance report more reliable experiences, all-wheel drive availability, not enough evidence and sources. Interesting that it said that. Sources mention the high-performance RS model. The provided text does not explicitly state whether that is available with all-wheel drive. I actually think that it does, but yeah, this is like a completely different car, honestly. <laughs> and as you can see with this one, we have way, way more sources. And by the way, that's adjustable. How many sources you can gather at once, how the API is exactly called and how the information is distributed and to what LLM, it's all adjustable. There are a ton of Reddit articles. We even have some from x.com. Typically places like X, you actually won't be able to access, but Bright Data was able to get a source. It actually actually searched chat GPT, clear practical breakdown, engine patrol, vehicle bright, all these different auto websites. Overall, pretty satisfied with this answer. It really is nice to have an interface that actually just gives you the direct links you can click. You can still get a very similar experience to this directly inside chat GPT or Google Gemini, but I've noticed sometimes you need to prompt for it, especially if it's going to tell you where it got certain sources. Like like this one, you can see each individual one, like citation here, citation here. Now, if you want to see your saved outputs, that's going to be in the outputs folder. As you can see, the basic agent and the more advanced deep dive agent have different sections, each one with their own answer.md and different sources. So everything is saved right out the gate. If you guys make anything cool and impressive with this, you know, modify it or add a new feature, make it better, I would totally love to know. No. The best place for that would be my Discord server linked down in the description of all my videos. Fantastic community that is always on the latest in AI. I want to thank you so much for watching today's video. I hope you got something valuable out of this. It is so incredible what we can do today and how many barriers have been broken down by AI technologies, whether it's Bright Data or Google Anti-Gravity. Huge thanks to them for sponsoring today's video. Click the link down in the description below to get started with their API. Have an awesome one, guys. I'll see you in the next video. Goodbye.